Welcome back to the channel Red Dirt Designs. On today's episode, we're going to give the aged copper look on this old gas can. Here's a look at the old gas can that we're going to be painting today. As you can see, it's very dirty and it's been sitting in storage for a while, so we're going to need to prep this. Very simple. All you got to do is get a lint-free towel and some wax and grease remover, and we're just going to wipe the whole thing down. Next, we're going to grab a gray scotch bright, and we're just going to scuff the surface so that way our white primer that we're going to spray over the top has two things, something for it to bite into so it doesn't peel up. When doing this, you want to make sure you get in all those hard to reach places like in these grooves. We don't want it to peel up from anywhere and those are usually the first places they'll peel is anywhere where you don't get it scuffed. So try to do a really good job while doing this. Once it's scuffed, now I'm just going back over it with that wax and grease remover and a lint free towel. Just to make sure everything's good and prepped right before we're getting ready to shoot our white primer. For this project, I'm going to put two coats of white primer. This is just to basically seal off that old primer and the copper uh, paint will really shine through and really come out a lot better with a lighter color. If we do it over black, it would probably take quite a few coats, but with this white, it should cover pretty quickly. I really like this Rust-Oleum metallic finish copper color. It actually looks pretty good right out of the can, but in order to give it that old grungy look, we're going to use a lot of texturing techniques that I'll show you later on in the video with my airbrush. We're going to put this on fairly smooth. I'm going to try to put it on fairly wet. That way it looks a little more shiny. If you put it on too dry, it tends to not look as reflective, and I'm trying to make sure I keep that look. Looks like a shiny penny right out of the can. It's a great look, but we want to grunge this up. And I'm also going to add this Jeep graphic that I printed off with my Cricut. I have other tutorials if you want to check out my page and you can find out a lot about how to use a Cricut, especially combining Cricut with airbrushing. I do a lot of this. What's most important is I get these colors right. I have yellow, red, and blue. And I also have a little bit of black. What we're gonna do is we're gonna mix these together to try to get this dark brown coppery color for the texture effect I'll be doing here in just a minute. Right here I'm just gonna use a photo reference for my cell phone and I wanna make sure it matches because I want this as close as possible. So it looks realistic. right here I'm just pouring it into an airbrush bottle. I'm going to make sure I have it reduced down to where I like it through my airbrush. I run it a little bit thin. Not as thin as some people do, but definitely enough to where I don't plug up my nozzle and cause it to spit. 
If it did spin on this project, it really wouldn't be that bad because it'd add to the texture. I'm placing a washer inside of the bottle, and then whenever I put the lid back on, it allows me to have it where it'll shake it up and mix it up really well. And it has a small hole at the top so the washer can't come out. That's how I mix my airbrush bottles. Now I got my handy Dollar General foaming carpet cleaner. This stuff works excellent for all my grunge effects. And it's not very expensive. You can get it about anywhere. And I don't think it matters on the brand. But I just spray it on and then I'll airbrush over the top. Whenever you're working with urethane paint, it doesn't, it doesn't bond to it, so it wipes right off and it gives you this grungy look. You'll be able to see the texture effect a little bit better when we get further along. I'll do several coats of this, and uh, it really, really is what gives you that distressed, like aged, weathered look. Now that I have the grunge effect the way I kind of like it, now I need to start getting some of these teals and greens and all the colors of this copper look on my phone here. I love those colors. So I bought myself some acrylic paint because it's super cheap and for this it's not on an automobile so I'm not going to put a bunch of money into it. So I'm just using water base and it actually works out really well. So just use your reference photo when you go to the store and try to make sure you match your colors as close as you can. I've reduced these colors down with water and I'm going to be ready to run them through the airbrush. I'm just going to kind of draw this out to where it kind of has this textury blue look. I don't want to get too carried away. I just kind of do it gradual. You can always add more if you don't like it. So I'm just doing a little at a time. Kind of just working it in. I don't, I don't want to do it too perfect. I kind of want to make sure I kind of add the texture to the blue as well. This is kind of the in-between color. This isn't the lightest color, it isn't the darkest color. And the reason I'm doing that is it gives me a workflow that I like. Make sure you get in all the grooves, cracks and crevices, any seams, anywhere where water might catch and run off try to run the blue grunge down those spots so it looks realistic uh. the next color is this minty green color I'm gonna go back over the top it's a little lighter in color too I'm going to try to add dimension and kind of try to emulate that picture I had earlier. I'm constantly looking at my reference, trying to get it as close as I can. It doesn't really bring the green out like I like, so I might have to add some green in here later. But I'm just going to keep building layers because that's what makes it look awesome. I'm not getting enough of that Statue of Liberty green that I kind of like with the copper. So I'm just going to add a little bit here, green to my color. I like this a lot better. And hopefully this will get rid of that too blue. It needs to be more teal. Now for the most important part, right here I'm just going to hit it with the grunge effect over the whole area and I'm going to hit it with urethane paint. Now this foaming cleaner is softening up the water based paint as we speak and then when you wipe it off right here you see it kind of brings some of it up right where the dots of the foam were 
which gives you that textury look that looks awesome. And it was actually by accident whenever I was doing a test on it, and I loved it, so I just kind of went with it. And now I'm just going back in and I'm blending with my airbrush with that dark urethane paint, and I'm just kind of blending and softening some of it, kind of giving some depth to some of these um, indentions and cracks and crevices, and blending some spots that I didn't like the way it looked. Then I'll wipe it down here with a lint-free towel one more time. I don't want to have anything on it, just dry. And now we're going to use a Scotch-Brite. And this right here is what just blends it all together. It makes it, knocks it all down, makes it look nice and weathered and smoothed out over the years. Here we'll zoom in on it here and I'll show you what it looks like. This is actually exactly what I was looking for. It looks like it's been out in the weather for a few years. Maybe you tried to clean it off a little bit. I love this look. And that finishes the artwork, so I'd seal this project up with some matte or a flat finish of some sort. I wouldn't use a gloss clear coat, I would just use like a matte clear coat. That'll make it look more accurate to what it would look for the aged look. Um, it's really up to you though, if you want to give it a gloss, that would work too. If you guys enjoyed this video and enjoy what I'm doing here, please subscribe to the channel. That would really help me out a lot. And that way I can keep bringing this content to you guys. Thanks so much for watching.